Hello, hello. Welcome to Community, a podcast of Safe Source Africa. We love to tell stories of African giving, generosity, and philanthropy. Season 12 of Community is telling stories of generous movers. By this, we mean people who give of their gift of mobility for good causes. Today, I am in Masaka town. That's how far we come to tell the stories. Look for the stories. <laughs> And the Obugado you hear are from Tom, who is going to tell us a bit about himself. And he has a wonderful story, and you will understand the reason why I had to drive all the way for 144 kilometers to come and look for Tom. Tom, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me this morning. My name is Tom Tise, and I'm a native of Masaka. I'm happy to chat with you, have a talk with you on this morning. Um, uh Masaka is welcoming you and you saw that roads are beautiful, so happy to have you here in my Masaka city. Thank you so much. So one of the questions I asked Tom, and I want him to say it on record, Tom, what do you like to have for breakfast? Oh my God, for breakfast, I would like to serve grasshoppers and vegetables. (laughs) (laughs) A true Masaka child. (laughs) For those listening to us from across the world, In Uganda, we eat a delicacy called grasshoppers. It is absolutely delicious. So yummy. And Masaka (laughs) is like grasshopper capital. Exactly. So, Tom, so tell us a bit more about yourself. So you you like grasshoppers and vegetables for breakfast. Uh, What what is is a a normal day like for you? Well, I early in the morning wake up, get a prayer, then do some drills and exercises. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do walks. Uh, or even runs intermittently. And then the other part of the day, I move around to the, the community because I don't have a specific office. So I prefer moving out to the people that I supervise, those people that make changes in the community. And I help them out here and there. I get calls every day. How can I do this? How can I do that? So my day is all about moving to people, talking to people, engaging with the people. When I have a free time, I love watching birds. So Mm -hmm. that's when I go do that. Mm -hmm. Take some shots of beautiful birds. Nature, scenery. I love nature. Yeah. So what what is the bird that is specific to Masaka? Masaka has so many river birds. Oh wow! Yeah, those ingenious. nest builders. We have mm. so many of them. Okay. And actually, other several bird types. We also have migratory birds that pass along in some seasons here. But we have so many river birds, so many doves, so many... Uh, uh, we also even have some types of eagle. Mm-hmm. Even some types of owls. Wow. Yeah, we have so many birds. Wow. It's a good place to see birds from. That's amazing. I actually did not know that about Masaka Town. Yeah. <laughs> so the other question I have for you is, like I said in the beginning, we as Safe Source love to tell stories of generosity and giving and philanthropy. Mm. So if you take us back into your history, Tom, what was your first, when did you first experience generosity in your life? Ah, well, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I remember I was this kind of person, even in my childhood, where I was favorite in the the community, not only to my parents, but people would just love me. They would would easily be called out, hey, Tom, go bring this, go bring that, go get me this. And I would easily go, unlike some of my brothers and siblings and peers who had first asked questions, why, blah, blah. And for me, it was easy. So when I even grew, grew up, I realized I love to su- to support people, mm-hmm. even when I wasn't in a good state financially mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I loved sharing, sharing and caring. Wow. So I, I, my first contact was joining an organization that was helping people come up with the drama to tell the world about impacts of HIV and uh, and AIDS at that time. Mm-hmm. So I was instrumental in making that research much as I was very young. So I loved the fact that I can, either without, without money, I can use me to reach out to the people. Yes, yes. So since then I did go back. That was around 2000. Wow, wow. So you realized early on that you yourself are an agent of change and generosity in exactly. your community. Okay, so... How you, you you said you do drills in the morning, so I assume you yourself are a, a runner. 
Tell us that story. How did you start running? Uh, actually, I, when I was still in primary school, we used to have this athletics time, you know, competition. I would love going around the pitch. That was kind of our mission, you know, these areas of ours. 25 laps, that's like equivalent to 10 kilometers, I would say, or 10,000 meters. So I would love sports, javelin, high jump. I would love to be active. My thing is being active. Mm -hmm. I love being active mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I engage myself, I engage my body, and even involve others and inspire. I try to inspire others. Even the thing I can't do, I inspire someone to do it. I remember one time, I wasn't a good, a good swimmer. Mm -hmm. But the way I would be in the waters, you'd, people around would say, oh my God, Tom, teach me how to swim. Then I would give them the skills. At the end of the day, they are better than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I love sharing what I know. Oh. And, I, and when I pass it out yes. to some other person, yes. they are better yeah, than yeah, even yeah. me, the wow, teacher. Wow. <laughs> and isn't that what change is about? That <laughs> even when you, you know, that your generosity should enable the people that you're, you're interacting your generosity with to be better than... Yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. So I'm here because I heard about Masaka Run. Actually, I remember when we had just started telling stories of generosity. Mm. Masaka Run is one of those that people said, there's a thing that happens and they raise money for good causes. So please tell us the genesis. How was Masaka Run born? Yeah, actually, I was, I still do somehow work with an organization, charity organization called Community Health Empowerment Development and Reef Agency, CHEDRA, here in Masaka. One of our core missions was helping people recover from the effects of several pandemics, including HIV, uh, vulnerable children, as a result of maybe wars, blah, 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 so many things. So CHEDRA, one of the strategies through which we would raise money was connecting and partnering with the other organizations in the world and individuals. We would get volunteers from Europe, they would come, we raise some sort of money and help out these people. Mm -hmm. We wanted to create something that is sustainable. Depending on funders who has it that much sustainable, because sometimes yes. they would come, they would come, they would take kids to school, they are in primary four, then the father pulls out, then yes. they can't continue. Yes. So one of the persons that came with, we partnered with from UK, uh, together with my other teams, we had this idea of saying, how oh, why can't we run? That was in 2014. Mm -hmm. And raise money for Chedra. I, even actually, I drew the first route map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drew it, then we ran along. Then we are like five. Before we knew it, the crowd was growing. People were just mm -hmm. following us running mm -hmm. all, on runs. Mm -hmm. Then, ah, this clicked our mind and said, maybe you can stage a real run. Mm -hmm. So in May, 20, May 2015, mm -hmm. 24th, our first marathon happened. Wow. Yeah, in Masaka. Yes. Uh, it was a trial. We learned lots of lessons from it. Yes. We had some few international runners. Mm -hmm. And then Masaka picked it up from there. Since then, we have not gone back. No, so tell us a bit of the lessons, because I want people to who, who, who don't always participate in the background to understand those lessons, what, what does it take uh, to, yes, to do a run? It's truly a good thing. Actually, running, running itself is easier than organizing the run itself. Interesting. Uh, ours is a charity run. Yes. Actually, our aim was to raise money for the projects that are in, around Masaka here. Mm -hmm. And our target was raising money for around 15 projects. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how much we would raise. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who would come. We didn't know what would happen at the end of the day. We are naive yes. at that time. All of us, we are just, we knew how to run, but didn't know, had never organized such a kind of event. Uh, there are lots of preparations from seeking permissions, from telling the, Masaka was a virgin place for running. Mm -hmm. they were all, there was this empty marathon. People used to hear about the runs, but... And the marathon, here, for those who don't know, happens in Kampala city. So Masaka, like I said in the beginning, is 144 kilometers from uh, Naria, at least is where I, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, come yeah. from. Yeah, so, it's, so just to give perspective, it's not, it's about a two-hour drive from yeah. the capital city. So yes. when Tom says that Masaka, you know, running was virgin in Masaka, that's, that's what he means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So picking, bringing the concept to the people here to appreciate it. Mm -hmm was really hard. So we had to go around people, educating people about running. Also educating even ourselves. How can runs raise money? 
someone comes and pays a given amount of money, say two dollars, how can that money help you realize your goal? Yes. You have to pay the foot the bill for the shirts, the running gear, the water, the facilitations, the marshals, the post, the announcements. So there were lots of things. Others we even drew budgets, but at the end of the day, what we realized, one of the lessons learned that every detail matters. Yeah. Capture every sort of detail. Yes, it's yes, very yes. important for the next course. Mm -hmm. Actually, immediately you finish this marathon, you organize another wow. right away. So what we did, we organ we fixed on people's calendars a date for it to run mm -hmm. every year. Every year. However, one beautiful thing that is unique and peculiar to our marathon was one. We have what we call a week experience. Runners come they connect with the people they are raising money for wow. and they get to see why they are raising the money for them. Oh. So, if a person prepared That's to raise it. maybe $40, they yes. say, oh my God, I need to up my game. Yes. And maybe make it 100 Yes, yes, yes. And even they get time to connect with the community. By the time they run, they are not so new to the area. Yes. They have acclimatized a little bit and it makes a huge difference in them. But as for organizers, you're running almost every day, every day, every night. You're the last person to sleep and the first person to wake up. Yes. Because there are lots of things that happen locally and internationally. One of them, we run actually the whole world. This is what we would say. Our run is the only run that has people from every continent, apart from maybe sometimes some sort of maybe Antarctica. And yes. Antarctica. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 But yes. almost yes. every person in the world is yes. every every continent is represented in our run. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so how many runs have you done? And and you said you run for several causes. So is it that for each run you run for one cause or all the causes are identified and every run has several causes? Yeah, you asked me how many runs have we done? We we've been running since 2015. Mm -hmm. It was only last year that we missed one. Even during the lockdown, we even had virtual runs at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. So we've only missed one. Those are many years to count. Yes, I yes, prefer yes. you not to make some measurements. Okay, there are more than one at least. <laughs> yes, so, okay. Now, mm -hmm. about how we do it. Mm -hmm. Because we said we run for different causes. Yes. We could have an umbrella catchy uh, title or slogan mm -hmm. reason for the run. However, under there, yes. everybody in there has an attachment to the run. Yes, We didn't want to limit ourselves to one thing because not we wanted to oh. capture as many people's interests as okay. possible. Understood. I give an example. There are people who are interested in children. Yes. And then you, when you tagline running for women, yes. this person will not support you so much. Oh. However, we would put a blanket title for, for the run, but anyone would come and run with us and they would find a passion for what they are running for in yes, there. Yes. So our yardstick was the sustainable development goals. There are 17 of them. Yes. So anyone who would apply, we would tell them, okay, as long as it fits that criteria, then we would put it on our agenda. To, as a cause to run for, okay. which made it so diverse, yes, very diverse mm -hmm. and very encompassing. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the unique thing about it that person who come really run. What about water, environment, uh, education, gender equality? All of them would meet them okay. in our run at the wow. end of the day. Wow. So every year we are aiming at supporting at least fifteen charities, which had different would sort them out to say that every bit of the SDGs is, is, is a little bit covered and okay. captured. Wow. However, we would work with still the local authorities to see to it that we don't duplicate, duplicate with the resources. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us a story? What is, like, of, of the several runs that have happened, <laughs> one or two that stand out for you in terms of, yeah, something, something that was unique for you? <laughs> You know, ah, that's a hard one. Because every year we have something that's different that happens. Yes. However, maybe this one could stand out. One of the, I think, I don't remember exactly the year, either 2016 or 17, this time around we had, you know, our run now, before I go to that, 
we have, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. A marathon is 42 kilometers. Yes. Then we have half marathon 21. Then we have 10 kilometers, which we call fun run. And of late, we integrated the, what we call the disability run. Wow. Uh, it is still an amateur stage because people come with their wheel, normal wheelchairs, mm -hmm. normal clutches, and run. Yes. However, that year we had a particular kind of people. Some of them were deaf, mm -hmm. others had prophetic limbs. Mm -hmm. So among the deaf persons that came that day, uh, it was a pair. Uh, we have a beautiful scenery in one of our runs. I designed and my teams a run in such a way that you even get lost in the beauty of Masaka. <laughs> yes, and, Masaka and we tell is people, very beautiful. we tell people, yes. don't mind about the time on running. Yes, just connect with the people and the environment. Yes. It's not competitive to say, oh, I've done it in two hours. Yes, yes, you will yes. not get That's that not here. Point. Yes, the yes. point is, how has the experience changed you? You've done so many other marathons world over, but this is a different one. Wow. Okay. So. This couple, it was a surprise to, to, to most, most of us, apart from a few who had prepared it. When they reached up there, one on the hill, mm -hmm. lo and behold, this guy goes on the knee and proposes. Oh, <laughs> so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. They're all, they're all deaf. Yes, and yes, yes. That thing happened. Oh. And it was so phenomenal. Oh, wow. It was wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is indeed a memorable moment. It was. Wow. And, and still can you stands tell us out. Any any low point? Like what has been in organizing all these runs? What 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 low point do you remember most? Uh, it was about we made up so much about safety mm -hmm. and health of the runners. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, we even had unfortunately COVID disbanded that group called do, uh, doctors, doctors, doctors. This group of doctors from UK, I'm forgetting their title. Mm -hmm. And to remember as we're going, you know, tell you. But this was one of the persons that, uh, because of maybe uh, certain, certain reasons it happens, uh, during the run, lost energy and collapsed. Mm -hmm. I would say. We have a very sharp and on point team. Mm -hmm. All our marshals are medics. Mm -hmm. We get from school. We have, nursing schools here yes and they are well trained in the first aid yes we have profession we have a red cross with us mm -hmm. standby mm -hmm. we have pre-booked healthy facilities we have a public hospital it's called the regional referral hospital yes uh we have uh, uh trained docs mm -hmm. get from, yeah, yeah. from all over the world mm -hmm. we have also even other people that are moving around a bigger team but when this, when this thing happened, we ran to the hospital and they did have capacity to handle, I think, athletic-related mm -hmm. conditions, I would say. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if someone has a bullet wound, mm -hmm. the medical soldier doctors are much better, probably, mm -hmm. than this traditional mm -hmm. ordinary, ordinary doctors. doctors. Yes, yes. I think it's, there are some variances in the yes, profession. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. So, when we reached there, they did something, but it wasn't really, really uh, good enough. But fortunately, all went well. At mm -hmm. the end of it, the patient recovered, mm -hmm. and uh, later on, we final things, and then was airlifted back home. Mm -hmm. But what we did from then, we equipped the emergency department, not for, for only for our run, mm -hmm. but even for other people all over yes. that get problems. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Whether similar or not similar, we realize yes. the emergency department needs to be uh, supported in one or another. Mm -hmm. So we joined with other people and beefed it because that low point there, which was going to be a very big disaster, we have never got any problem with people running and maybe doing anything. Yes. But now we are confident we can always have it because the team there is ready to take up the task, regardless of the magnitude and nature of it. Because yeah, yeah. the, the other one shocked us so much. And, and even the condition that happened to this runner was new to even mm. all of us, mm. even the professional runners were like, oh my God, I've never seen something like this. Yes, yes. So each time from that lesson, we learned how, what to do and who to do it with yes. and who to partner with wow. and what to do. Wow. And recently, not so long ago, I think five or six years ago, the government has been partnership with one of the 
I think Korean agencies, they are training, serious training, and they have beefed up the emergency facilities there. People just make a call and the ambulance comes to their homes. Yes, Picks yes, them up. Yes, so yes. everything is now wow. good out there. So yes, it, you know, that, that low point <laughs> turned into a good point. Very much so. Yes. It was a very wow. positive one. Wow. So, Tom, as, as yourself, do you participate in other runs or Masaka is your... I do. The one you do, yes. Uh, I think uh, the same distance as from here to Kampala, when you, Barora, the city, I remember, went there as consultants and we helped them stay, put up a marathon, a charity run that was aimed at, uh, I think, raising awareness to do with uh, rubbish and cleanliness of the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been invited in several areas, personally me, in helping people organize and set up the marathons. That is at the, at the other level. Being involved in the marathon, technically, yes, yes I've been in so many of them. Others do the, I do them over on, over the phone because I know what to tell people. Yes. And if they just do that, everything goes right. Yeah, yeah. And I've been also physically participating in marathons. I've been running, I went to... Uh, there's this traditional method in Rwanda. I go there somewhere, run. Oh. Uh, Kabaka's birthday, run. Yes. And I also run this MTM run, the cancer run. Yes. I also participate in those runs okay. around. Okay. Yes, okay. physically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but people always invite me and my team to help them set up a run. That's amazing. That's yes. amazing. So, in the process, you've actually gained a skill that you're also. Giving exactly, yeah, yeah, to yeah. others that want to yeah. use the gift of mobility for good causes. So as we start to wind down this conversation, I, I'm thinking to myself, yeah. because when <laughs> offline, off, 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 um, recording, you described yourself when I asked about the massacre run. You said you are in the labor ward. <laughs> and I see that therefore you've gone ahead <laughs> to be a traditional birth attendant for other runs. But what, what does it feel like really to birth such good things from mobility? What does it feel like for you, Tom? Personally, when you walk, when you walk to the streets, people recognize you. Mm -hmm. People call you by your name. You even don't know them, but because you're a social person, you smell back, and like you struggle, where did I see this person? Yes. Where yes. was it? Yes, oh, yes. People of all kinds of walks, the little ones, even the adults. Yes. Our run, I think we had one, the oldest person was around 80 years, and she yeah. ran oh. the full 10 kilometers in a gomesi. You know oh, that gomesi? Yes, that's a traditional dress. <laughs> people just put it on one. for two, for maybe 10 minutes, and they're all sweating. Yes. This is a good place. Yes. But this lady oh, ran wow. the marathon wow. in one. <laughs> yes, that is, that is impossible, you people. People who, number one, I know many men run. Try running in a Gomesi, then come and tell Tom that story. That is amazing. So, wow. for me, it's a change maker. Yes. Uh, I happy you go out there people are happy to have you yes people by miss you by force like oh, you've taken all that to check on us why are yes. you like yes. wow you easily connect with the people because yes. they really know you and they call you from a passionate background yeah they are happy to have with you they some of them even testify you give them advice you help them here and there, they testify that their lives have been changed. So no, it's not me, it's a team, it's effort. So no, you are here all the time. Yes. So it's a team. No, we want to, be, want to say this to you that you changed our lives. Yes. And uh, I say, oh, thank you, God, that I was able to impact someone. Yes. And also, that's just the other part, but there are also business people. Yes. During the event week, so many people are given businesses Say the border borders. Mm -hmm. I sometimes get even free rides. They say, ah, oh, you're our man. Yes. Oh, <laughs> they want to give us business. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the grocery stores around the marketplaces, the people that, like the marshals, we go to schools, talk to them. We go to the uh, like institutions of life, like nursing schools, even secondary schools. Uh, so the engagements we have with people, they are, it makes me feel like there is something I've done to the, for them in the community and they are happy about it. And when I call them out for anything, they return. They always come back very fast and positively. 
Yeah, that's, so that's it about me, the way the marathon has changed me, connect with the people within here. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that uh, even when I walk into some bigger offices, people recognize me. One thing about the beauty about marathon, you don't get to see that this is a general, this is a CEO, it's a cow. You are almost at the same level. You rub shoulders easily. Yes, you, it's a we, leveler. <laughs> it yeah. builds community. Yes. yes, and you get to enter to people's office. Yes, when they when they meet you at your own office easily, and yes. they are happy to even say say, okay, you go here. Even uh, definitely, general can also follow suit, yes. which you can't do. Yeah, I know, ordinarily, <laughs> in everyday <laughs> life. Yes, yes. Because they are the ones who usually give the orders. Yes, exactly. Wow, that so that's the amazing. beauty about that. That's amazing, that's amazing. Yeah. So Tom, as we, as we come to the end, thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, one last word. You said you've been in Masaka a long time. I was thinking, do you want to, you know, how, how long do you see this happening? Do you see 10 more runs, 100 more runs? What do you see in the future of Masaka Run? Uh, Masaka Run is, uh, is here to stay for mm -hmm. a couple of reasons, but there's this reason that stands out. It's a social reason. Mm -hmm. We have other traditional runs in different areas of Uganda, mainly Kampala, mm -hmm. and Etemi is even having one. Which, which are traditional. Masaka didn't have anything like that. Yes. People are asking, why don't you bring it to Jinja, Mbarara? I said, mm -hmm. this is Masaka's. Everybody from anywhere in the world should come to Masaka and run from there, regardless of what they want to run for, as long as it's, it's uh, keeping other factors constant. Yes. So for that yeah. reason, our run is there to stay. Because it's now Masaka's traditional and a known run. When the days come around, in people's bodies, they feel it already. Yes, they yes. feel it. They even ask us, ah, we're not seeing anything around about the mother. Are we going to have our thing? So it's not our thing anymore. It's, it's the, the community. It is the community oh, wow. run. Yes, yes. So yes, it's yes. going to see how to stay. Uh, one thing that also, I remember this question you asked me about what stands out, but I remember besides the other engagement, but in 2016 and 2017, we are nominated as one of the best international charity runs in the whole world. We got a gold, wow. uh, gold medal, uh, beating even other ones before you know it. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's and amazing. then have been in several competitions and run and no, things have been happening. Things are a happening. Lot, a lot. And the Masaka run is here to stay. It is here to stay. And Tom and <laughs> others will keep birthing <laughs> people that use their yeah. gift of mobility for good. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time. Masaka runners, when is, when is the run? Maybe I should come for the next one. Uh, it's, the, it's going to be uh, the last f Sunday. Actually, it's the last day of May. That's when the run will ah, be. So I missed I'll, the one of this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's gone already. <laughs> yes. So it's, we're having it in, in, uh, in May. Mm -hmm. That's when we have it. Tom, next year, May 31st, is the next Masaka run please sign up <laughs> how much is it how much do we pay um like what is what are the details uh, it depends on the package because oh. we have that the people who have a week experience with us oh yes a, i remember that yes yes so they pay, also it, it depends according where they're going to uh, the suit the room they're going to stay in mm -hmm. but all that is on our website i will leave you with the link uh -huh. all the details will be there wow. and uh it's it's an experience that is worth what um take it, participating participating in, in. okay using your bodies uh -huh. and then changing the changing the world changing using the our world bodies. Yeah. thank you so much tom thank you so much to all those that have supported and run with and given to masaka run it's absolutely amazing what you're doing thank you tom for being our guest oh, my pleasure and for those of our listeners see you again or hear you again or hear us again next thursday thank you so much for listening in bye bye, -bye.